I'm going to name two NBA players, and I want you to tell me which one you think will have a better career. Victor Wembanyama or Luka Doncic? You know how I feel. Victor Wembanyama is the future GOAT. This guy is going to be the greatest <laughs> basketball player that we've ever seen. Oh, my God. He, I'm, I'm telling you right now, he is. People were making jokes on about People were making jokes on Twitter about it before he got drafted. I'm taking that to heart. He is the one <laughs> sent to save us from Jordan LeBron conversations for the rest of our lives. Because everyone's going to look at him and be like, nah, he's the one. He's the future. making it shine. Oh, my he's God. He ain't missed a spot, too. Good God. You're you know when you, you have those popsicles and you just do the tip and it gets clear icy? That's, that's what he's doing? He's a pro. <laughs> he's been doing it for months damn I, now, mean, I know you guys are not going to sit there and tell me that what I saw <laughs> with my eyes this past season was wrong was not goat trajectory stuff no I agree I think Vic is probably going to be one of those ones but so is Luca. Luca's also on top 25 of all time trajectory and listen he's had the benefit of having five years of getting ahead of Wembenyama but I, I don't have a problem at all of you picking with Vic uh, he about to get swept in the finals we don't care about that <laughs> All right, we could, we could go with Wemby. I mean, they're two different trajectories right now because one's 25, one just turned 20 or whatever. I'll go with Wemby, though. Team has upside. Yeah, listen. Wemby might be one of the best two-way players of all time. Like, he might be in a different stratosphere because of his defense, so I'm not mad at the pick. Zion Williamson versus Chet Holmgren. Ooh. This is I tough. think I want to go Chet just because <laughs> as great as I think Zion is going to be because I still think that he has, a, like, another level to reach to. Chet just was so good in his rookie year that I'm like, if he can stay healthy, unlike Zion, he'll be better than him. Yeah, I can. If, I can agree if health that. wasn't a factor, I would go with Zion and I wouldn't think twice about it. But health is a factor. And I feel like we know what Chet's going to be. He's going to be one of the most productive, helpful players to building a team for a long time. He looks to be set up well to win for a long time with another superstar. It feels like he's a pretty safe bet. I think that's the real determining factor. We do talk about health. We can talk about health between the two, but we can't sit here and act like Chet just didn't miss his entirety of his rookie year. But at the same time, too, Zion missed a hell of a lot more time, but naturally because he's been in the league a little bit longer. But I do like the yeah. way that Chet is set up in OKC. OKC has hella picks, picks on picks on picks. Already have a superstar in Shea Gogus Alexander, and then J-Dub's right there waiting to blossom and bloom. Chet, when it's all said and done, might have the better career. Listen, Zion gets hurt a lot because his ligaments can't contain themselves. Chet missed the season because he had 300 pounds of LeBron James stomping on his foot in a rec game. I don't think it's going to happen every year. You never know, man. LeBron, he's playing again this season too. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> LeBron is looming. He's a constant threat to step on his foot. It's the Chet killer. The UCLA <laughs> runs get serious, man. Facts. <laughs> all right, next one. Paolo Bancaro versus Tyrese Halliburton. I would say it Indiana is... off the bat is Ooh. set up better. Thus, like Tyrese naturally set up better throughout his career because Orlando probably doesn't have two two players who can make three threes in a row. But me personally, I is think it, Paolo's ceiling is higher. So I'm only in Paolo. I was going to say, is this difficult? I feel like Paolo's ceiling is way higher. I feel very safe betting that he has a legitimate all NBA career for a long time. Yeah, I'm going to go Paolo as well. I just think like, even though that Tyrese has kind of like the build and the potential to maybe be an average defender, Paolo like legitimately has the size to be impactful on both ends. And mm -hmm. so going, going forward and also just being like the primary scorer, you're listen, you're going to get a boost just because you're yeah. the number one option on offense. So he's going to have the size and skill to be a legitimate big wing that can be a first option on a team. Tyrese is great. He'll be all NBA for a while. I don't think his archetype has the same type of ceiling. Facts. Yeah, exactly. There's only so far that you can go with being a pass first type player, which he's shown consistently through the season and with Paulo, yeah. someone who can do a better job of balancing both while also being a legit unstoppable force which Tyrese is clearly not Paulo's yeah clearly it's, it's no criticism of Tyrese Paulo just has that high of a ceiling LaMelo Ball or Cade Cunningham I mean if we could free Cade then I would take Cade Cunningham but he no LaMelo been an all-star what are you talking about Cade Cunningham has been in basketball hell for his entire career he hasn't exactly been the savior either what do you want him to do? <laughs> what do you, what do you want him to do? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't blame it all. Him. I think LaMelo Ball has insane ceiling if he can ever stay healthy. Will those ankles ever hold up for 50 games in a row? I don't know. It's I lean LaMelo, but I don't feel good about it. 
I, I'll, I'll feel good about it for you. I'm definitely leaning Lamelo because I've seen <laughs> multiple. I seen a true avenue where he could be all NBA on a consistent basis. But well, I do say that it doesn't matter what Cade Cunningham does on the court because you just can't see all NBA anything <laughs> when you're a Detroit Piston. Lamelo is six seven, an elite passer and an elite shooter who started to show he can get to the rim well. That is a list of traits only shared by him and Luka Doncic right now. He has a crazy ceiling as an on-ball creator. Will he hit it? I don't even know. Again, free Cade. <laughs> free Cade. No, Cade's going to be great, too. I think we're, Cade should be in for a big year next year. Free I Cade agree. to live backwards. Trey Young versus De'Aaron Fox. Trey Young's I, cool. Listen, I like, I like everything that De'Aaron Fox has done in his career. I like the growth that he has shown. I'm still taking Trey Young. Trey Young's going down in NBA history. Uh, when All it comes right, to just like right. no, he quite literally what? is. When, look at the look at the assist. What do you mean? What what record is Darren Fox breaking? He's not putting up twenty five and twelve on a consistent basis like Trey Young is. Now neither you call me a pro. You call, listen, listen, you call me a pro. You are teaching people how to do. It. You're a professor. You're reaching around and doing something special with it. Did I lie oh one my bit God, yet? That's crazy. <laughs> Did, uh, that's that's crazy. crazy. Did I lie though? No, I didn't. Yes. What the fuck do you mean he's going down in history? He's literally going down in history. He, Man, my bro, he is quite literally one of the best deep <laughs> shooters that we've seen in history That's while crazy. also distributing the ball. Darren Fox is neither of that. <laughs> what is historical about you saying <laughs> sorry, breaking mama. records? What are you talking about? Points and assists. What do you mean? That's what I'm talking what about. Did you mean? What points and assist record does he have? Would you still feel this way about him after he leaves you? Trayon can never do no wrong in my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you will never leave I me. think I think it's also Trey Young, but you're making me really want to pick De'Aaron Fox. No. You're, you keep on talking about what record? Simple as this, points and assists. Getting a bucket and also getting an He's assist. Records, same things trade. that James Harden does. <laughs> same things that LeBron has done in the past and Luka Doncic is currently doing too. Trey Young is under that same umbrella. All right, congratulations. He's a prize picks Hall of Famer. Like, <laughs> like Hall of Fame gawker. This is crazy. Hey, man. Next Sorry, Darren Fox. Scotty Barnes or Tyrese Maxey? I like Tyrese Maxey more, so I'm going with him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ty, Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey Tyrese Maxey took a leap scoring-wise this season and got to the point where I legitimately think that he can be a very impactful two on a like championship level team. And I think that he still has ways to grow in areas that I just don't think that Scotty is ever going to be uh, impactful in that way. And so, yeah, this is a scoring bias, but I'm going to take Tyrese on that. I think Scotty Barnes has so many more levels to get to. I think we're just scratching the surface of how good he can be. That type of frame, passing ability, defensive ability, the ceiling that gives you with that size, I think is next level. I can agree to that for sure, but I might lean towards Tyrese Maxey because what if Scotty Barnes is just like miscasted and like misplaced. What if he's just like a slightly more talented Aaron Gordon? I have no reason to believe that. He's an all-star. I mean, Aaron he's, Gordon was pretty good too. He wasn't an all-star good, but he was pretty good too as a young exactly. player. Exactly. He wasn't was an Aaron all-star. Gordon good? No, not really. Not, he was exactly. never, Aaron Gordon was, he was never good. even half as good as Scotty Barnes was this year. Wow. You're basically calling Aaron Gordon a bum at that point. First option? Of course he's a bum as a first option. There's a reason he got <laughs> traded to where he got traded to. I'm about to look this up. Shout out Aaron Gordon. Fantastic role player. Scotty Barnes is not in those conversations. Listen, you respect Aaron Gordon. Because he was 23rd in most improved player voting in 2017, 2018. 23rd? Damn, I didn't even know like, they counted you don't that What does that, that mean? Man. You he don't got, disrespect like, one or two that votes? man. I, I don't know. On, on basketball reference, it just says awards MIP-23. I so, ain't yeah. lying. If I was <laughs> a player, got, like, I, would not, I would not want that written down on my resume at all. Like, that would... <laughs> what are we doing at that he point? Got, that means he got one third place vote by some random magic voter. That year, though. Right, next, he was going kind of crazy. 17 and 8. <laughs> kind Whatever. Of nice. John Morant or Devin Booker? It's pretty easily John Morant. Um, easily? Yeah, he's younger. Team is all we around set up Devin better. So more picks. I know. Better Devin Booker is great. <laughs> Devin Booker is great for sure. But when it's all said and done, well, Devin Booker will have all the his, all the history by his side too because he's been getting buckets on buckets on buckets forever, it seems like. And John literally just missed an entire year. I can go with John Morant. He has a great team that's set up to succeed for a while. He's a game-breaking player that can be a first option, create for others. 
But I don't know. Devin Booker's great, and he's in a low right now because he has his stupid ass team that Matt Ishbia created. But eventually, he's gonna get free from that, and he's gonna make some damage happen again. Sadly, eventually, he's not now, and that's why John Morant is the best, is gonna have the better career. I'll go with Ja. Yeah, I, I think I think I, I'll go with Ja just because the ceiling of Ja at his best, like we we've, we've seen it, and yeah. we've seen that like whenever he's on that team, instantly they they start they start winning. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna go with John Murray. One of the few players that's extremely hyped because of highlight watchers, but it also matches the productivity. Donovan Mitchell or Damian Lillard? <sighs> uh, well, I mean, listen, this one really just comes down to who's gonna grow a bigger beard. And like if Donovan <laughs> Mitchell can get his size to to connect like Damian Lillard's and maybe get a little bit more hair, he can accomplish the same things that Damian Lillard did. So uh, I'm going to go with uh, with D. Mitch. Wow. It's easy to slander Damian Lillard coming off of the year he's coming off of. But he's had a great career for a long time. No, he, really high he, he really has. He really has. It's, it's, pro it's, prob it's probably Dame because I don't think that D. Mitch is ever going to go down in history as like a top three whatever. Whereas like Dame, you can legitimately look at him and where he shoots from, how he shoots, and like the shot uh, diet that he gets and say... Like, this might be a top, like, five shooter of all time. Yeah. yeah it's all going to change when Donovan Mitchell ends up a Laker next year and they win a title with that new big three. Yeah, right, right, I right, think right, that'll right, really change right, the trajectory right, of this. Right, so, right, looking right, look right. into the future, we can go Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, Laker legend. Uh, no. <laughs> Man, you are something else right now. Holy shit. You're daydreaming like a mug. Don't and tell I'll one of me too. with what we said earlier. <laughs> you were down bad for Dan Hurley, so I don't blame you right now. Down bad? I don't know if I was down bad for Dan Hurley. <laughs> You're a Lakers fan. You immediately get that tax. Pawning everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help make make the extra thirty million dollars needed to get him. What yeah. was the what so far Sell in you guys' opinion? What is Absolutely. like the shining moment of Donovan Mitchell's career? Is it like his rookie year against like the Oklahoma City Thunder when he embarrassed those guys year. in the playoffs, or is it the bubble? It's, it's probably the bubble. Too. I th I think it's, it's the this bubble. year had a great run too. Yeah. yeah, he was really good in the playoffs. He averaged thirty one against the Celtics defense. He went crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's true. A that's shining true. moment as a moment, probably the bubble. But this is the best version of him. He's still getting better. I, I think man, that, bubble, that, that bubble arena, he couldn't miss. No fans in the arena. I mean, no one could. TJ Warren was fucking putting up 27. It was crazy. <laughs> or 20 or whatever. You had, you had to be there, TJ Warren, man. Yeah. Definition of you had to be there. <laughs> TJ Warren. Last one. Shea Gildas Alexander or Anthony Edwards? <laughs> Think Listen. carefully. Bulls gonna have great careers. Whole lot of ore in one screen. There's a lot going oh, yeah. on right now. <laughs> Damn. I don't know which one to pick because Shea obviously has a team perfectly set up and Anthony Edwards has seen so much success already as a 22, 23 year old made it to the Western Conference Finals. I might lean towards Shea because he was second or third in MVP voting and Anthony Edwards is just not there yet from what we, we can see. But this Somebody is a better career. This is projecting. I think Ant has a lot of improvement uh, left still. Right now, Shea's better, but I could see a world where Ant peaks with a higher ceiling. He has. They both have the skill sets to win at the highest level. It's just who gets it done. I, but I think when they're primes, I think Ant will be the better player. So I'll go with him. As an individual, I guess so, because the three-point shooting and the athleticism is the difference. He de Ant definitely has the potential. Shea's 35-5 and five right now and already a, a good <laughs> defender. So I, I think I'm going to go Shea. Yeah, you can't go wrong. It's going to be close. Especially because Shea's game might age a little bit better just because it's not as based on athleticism as Ant's. Yeah, but his he Adidas might... commercials are way better than Shea Skim's commercials. Is and When is Shea going to be calling Fair. out Cam and Mace? Those are your guys, Donovan. Why are they my guys? You know why they're your guys. All right, bro. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> What's the implication here? <laughs> I don't know. You like their podcast. What do you mean? Do, All do right. We have, well, do, do, do we have to start beef with Cam and Mace? No. God, no. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Next thing. So that's we're going to play 20 questions. <laughs> but we're going to play 10 questions. Hey, yo, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys. 